What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another episode of Twists and Turns. Here's a quick warning that there are spoilers in this video for the ninth epilogue. But you probably already knew that. I don't want anyone giving me a lawsuit because they got spoiled uh, for this story in one of my videos. Anyway, Batman died in Infinity War. Let's go. Guys, I'm really excited for this video actually, even though it's not that long of a video. This epilogue was surprisingly short, but it changed a lot, and it gives us a lot to talk about. Um, so we're going to talk about both big reveals in this, I'd say there's two big reveals. Uh, but first, it's required for me to tell you to subscribe. If you don't, then unfortunately for you, I'm going to have to launch a missile straight to your house. Uh, so it's probably best that you subscribe. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have threatened people. Uh, to subscribe, but do it. Just subscribe. I'm on my last push to 10k, and I think we can get there before the end of the month. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the girl that everybody wants me to talk about. So last time we had Jake, uh, the Stitch Wraith, protect this girl from these drug dealers, and in this epilogue, we find out that the girl's name is Ronell. She wakes up and looks better than she did before, but Jake points out a few things that are off. Number one, there's something off with her name, but Jake can't quite put his finger on what it is. We're actually going to return to this in a second because it's very important. Number two, Jake is surprised that Ronell isn't scared of him, uh, like all other humans really. She describes that being homeless for so long has shown her that real monsters look like normal people, but take advantage of others. However, that's still kind of sus. Number three, and the one that blew my mind when I first read it, is that she has a silver heart-shaped pendant. Now, to Jake, it doesn't really mean anything to him. Uh, he actually sees it more as like a stroke of luck. Um, but if you've read To Be Beautiful, <laughs> you know exactly what it is. As a quick reminder or a summary to this story, uh, a girl wishes to be beautiful, and she finds a robot called Eleanor that makes her wishes come true. Uh, day by day, the girl becomes more and more beautiful as long as she keeps on a heart-shaped pendant. And yes, I'm 99% sure that this is the same one from this epilogue. The big reveal in the story, however, is that the pendant was creating an illusion that made people around her see her as a beautiful human, when in reality, Eleanor had severed off all of her limbs <laughs> and replaced them with scrap bits of metal. To this day, this is one of my favourite stories in the entirety of the series, and I'm so glad that the pendant has come back. So knowing this story now and all of that information about that story, let's think about who the girl actually is. Our third point was that she was wearing the necklace, and that necklace creates an illusion. So I don't think the girl is really who she says she is. The second point that we made was that she wasn't scared of the Stitch Wraith. If she's a liar, maybe she's not scared of the Stitch Wraith, because she's one of his kind. In other words, she's also a monster underneath her blanket of illusion. And this is where we turn back to her name. Her name is Ronell, and Jake specifically points out that there's something wrong with that name. Well, if you look at her name backwards, R-E-N-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, uh, if you look at it backwards, E-L-L-E-N-E-R, then it spells out Eleanor, or Eleanor, or whatever, <laughs> which is extremely close to the name Eleanor, who is a robot, aka what people perceive as monsters. This girl that we are talking about in this epilogue is undeniably Eleanor, who in To Be Beautiful left the girl in scraps and ran away in her body, in her old body. If Jake was to take off this pendant that she is wearing, what you would see is a giraffe circus baby animatronic. <laughs> now this explanation just works for me. Uh, I hope it works for you too, because I believe that in the next epilogue we're going to find out for sure that Ronell is actually evil and then something bad is going to happen because of it. Now there is one thing that I would like to talk about while we're focused on the section about Ronell, and that is actually her backstory and her family. So Ronell was actually kicked out onto the streets by her father. Her mother died when she was only 13 and to deal with the grief her father became obsessed with his work. She was kicked out because she stole money from him when he was when she, he sent her to boarding school. Now, I'm not 100% with this theory, but many people have said that her father is, or is a parallel to William Afton. We never actually saw Afton's wife in the games, and so we assume she passed away, 
and the popular will grief theory states that Afton's actions were actually as a result of his grief. Uh, his wife died, his youngest son, his daughter, all of his grief in his life uh, could have made him a killer. But once again, I don't completely agree with that. To finish off with one final thought, Afton's daughter was Elizabeth, who became Circus Baby. And the father in this story has a daughter called Ronelle, who we believe to be Eleanor, which is a Circus Baby style animatronic. Ah! Okay, let's move on to the thing that has changed a huge part of, uh, of mine and other people's beliefs in the FNAF lore. We're still following Detective Larson, who in the last epilogue uh, found the bull pit and took a blood sample from the bulls. Now in this epilogue we find out that there are 30 different samples taken, but the thing about all of them is that they were all different. However, what they found was that they weren't from 30 different people, like they first thought. Instead, they were all from different times. 30 different blood samples from 30 different years. That to me is a huge twist and I don't have a fully fleshed explanation for how this works or why this happens. But let's think about this for a second. Remember that the pit that Oswald jumped into took him all the way back to the year 1985. However, we didn't have the present year for this story. Now we know. 30 years from 1985 is 2015. Great, brilliant, new information. Uh, fantastic, but please somebody explain to me how there are 30 different years worth of blood in this pit. The reason this piece of information changes everything that we know is because I, it actually makes my agony videos slightly incorrect. We talked about how the pit didn't actually take Oswald back in time, but and I said it, it was simply an illusion, a hallucination if you will. Uh, as a result of high amounts of agony, and if that's true, how come there's a blood, blood sample from 1985, 1986, 1987? It, it doesn't really make much sense. The only ways I can see this making sense are, firstly, if agony suddenly had the ability to manipulate DNA, which I really don't think is a great hypothesis, or if it had the ability to actually take you through time. Um, and the blood that was let out in the story could have actually travelled through time itself. Think of it like a waterfall. You have a top and you have a bottom. If you jump from the top, yes, you'll get to the bottom, but there's a whole load of water in between. So yes, there's blood that's travelled all the way back to 1985, and there's blood in 2015 that, that didn't travel through time at all. However, there is also blood all the way in between that. So maybe this does change the FNAF lore, and maybe time travel is a possibility. All I'm going to say is that I think we're going to have to be prepared for the next two epilogues, because I have a feeling it's going to clear all this up, but it's also going to be an explanation that we didn't really want. Hopefully that explanation isn't time travel. Anyway, that's enough of me talking. What do you guys think about an Eleanor and Ronell? Uh, what do you think about Larson's blood samples? Who do you think the blood is even from? Uh, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this in the future and if I have any more ideas I'll make sure to make a video on it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Goodbye!